Nigerian governors have asked President Muhammadu Buhari for a bailout fund to address the security situation in, the sta in their states. The governor made this submission on Tuesday at a meeting between President Buhari and members of the Nigerian Gov Governors Forum NGF uh, Security Council and security chiefs at the presidential villa in Abuja. The meeting, held via video conferencing, was also attended by Vice President Yemi Oshibajo. In a statement signed by President Buhari's spokesperson, Garba Shehu, Governor Kayade Faemi of Ikiti State, in his remark, urged the president to consider a bailout for states, especially as governors allowed the federal government to withdraw $1 billion from the excess crude account for the procurement of weapons to fight insecurity in the country. In their submissions anchored by Governor Kayade Faemi of Ikiti State and Governor Babagana Zulum of Bruno State, the governors highlighted the problems of poverty, unemployment, the trust deficit between the military and civilian populations, and the inflow of small arms into the country. The governors also pointed to the problem of coordination among military and security chiefs and played up their own security rules, which included US, uh, 1 billion US dollars they have allowed the president to withdraw from the excess crude account for weapons procurement two years ago. Joining us on this matter uh, from Abuja, we have security expert Kabir Adamu. Good to have you, Mr. Adamu. Yeah, good morning. I'm sure you've been following all of the conversations uh, that we are having on the breakfast this morning. And now let's take a look, uh, shine the light again, as always, on security. With this recent request for more funds, you know, it brings to light the constant accusations of politicians of profiteering from the insecurity issues. I'm wondering what's your take as an expert uh, on this matter? Um, I, to, I would like to be very, very plain here um, and speak what the ordinary Nigerian on the street would probably be feeling at the moment. Um, what, what is the state of security in the country? People are dying in, no, in numbers. There is no um, region in the country that is not afflicted by one or the other form of insecurity. So what the ordinary Nigerian would probably be asking um, monies have been released, they've been budgeted, yet people are dying. And then now there is a demand for more money. How will that mo more money relate to better security for the ordinary Nigeria? Now, from the point of view of an expert, um, the, one of the easiest and best ways to ensure that monies that are released are, are used judiciously is through auditing functions and then um, monitoring and evaluation functions. Unfortunately, the Nigerian security architecture and security go sector governance in Nigeria is almost uh, completely missing these two elements of auditing and monitoring and evaluation. Mm -hmm. So monies will be sunk in, but there is no transparent way of ensuring that, that those monies are, are judiciously used for the purpose of um, you know, securing Nigeria. What we are likely to see is the scenario of um, uh, uh, trying to fetch water with a basket or uh, putting down a leaking bucket and hoping that that bucket will stop leaking. Um, I do not think what we need at the moment is more money. Mm -hmm. I, by this statement, I'm not denying the fact that there is um, a need, need for more equipment, need for better training, as well as need for improvement of the welfare of all our security agents. But where you have leakages within the system, where you do not have a transparent way of ensuring that the money voted or released are used judiciously, then it will be like the situation I mentioned, mm. um, trying to fetch water with, with the basket or dropping a leaking bucket, hoping it will stop leaking. All right. Just before you came on, we've had a conversation with uh, Professor Pat Otomi on the state of the nation. And one of the things he mentioned is the fact that there is a disconnect, you know, between the leadership and the people. And we are talking about security and funds are constantly being popped, pumped into the fight for, you know, for fighting of insecurity from buying the equipment to recruiting more personnel. But again, much has not changed, you know, even as you are highlighting it there. For the ordinary Nigerian, who should we be listening to? You know, is it the government or where would help come from as far as this fight against insecurity is concerned? Um, we need to look more closely at the style of government that we're pursuing. We are in a democracy and there are three levels of um, go go govern government in Nigeria. The, well, um, 
legislature, the executive arm, and the judicial arm of government. Now, there is a check and balance rule that these three levels play on each other. Um, we should be looking at all, all of these levels. The executive arm of government has a responsibility, and the legislative arm of government has a responsibility. The primary purpose of governance is the provision of um, security for life and property. And where, wherever any of this is being questioned, then I think uh, both all these three levels of government needs to live up. And then at, at the end of the day, we as Nigerians also have that responsibility to question some of these actions. So I think it's a combination of both. Members of governance are coming from within us. They are not, they are not ghosts. They are not foreigners. They are Nigerians themselves. They are feeling the effect of what we are feeling. So at the end of the day, I think the responsibility lies on each and every one of us to call for an improvement in, go in, go in government in Nigeria. Um, the, our needs, our requirements um, of the average Nigerian, it's not that much. And it is the responsibility of go government to provide those needs, especially in the area of security. I mean, still on the matter, uh, you know, at hand, the chief of army staff, Tuku Burate, says that the army have chased the terrorists, you know, out of the northeast. Countless times he mentioned that. But the governors are saying otherwise. Now, how do we merge the two views, these two narratives, which is which? Um, I think with, with um, all due respect to General Burate, maybe we should, we should ask him to go to the northeast, uh, those places where he has he's saying that he's pushed the insurgents out. We should ask him to go, go there without the paraphernalia of state security that he has around him. Mm -hmm. And then let when he goes, let him come back. That way we'll know that he's pushed them out. Now, on a serious note, um, there are still uh, pockets of insurgents in almost all the parts of um, Borno State, as well as several other parts of the North. It's just yesterday, Madagali in northern Adamawa was attacked. And the attack was sustained for a couple of almost up to an hour. Um, in Yobe State, the same thing. In Northern Borno, the same thing. But the border area between uh, Borno and Cameroon around the Mandara Mountains are constantly being attacked. So, um, you know, yes, they've done well in terms of reducing the frequency of attacks. Mm -hmm. But to say that um, the insurgents have been flushed out, I think, unfortunately, that is wish wishful thinking. Right. I mean, let's say a bit more on Borno stage there. The governor said, has, you know, said, uh, consistently accused the military of complacency, especially with the recent death of uh, travelers in Aono town. I believe that's how it's called. You know, a town that has been attacked six times since Governor Zulum was sworn in. What's your thoughts on this? Um, the governor of the Borno state deserves a lot of commendation. He has come out as a silver lining, as uh, you know, a unique leader who is giving hope to a lot of Nigerians. He speaks the language that his um, citizens, the residents of Borno want, want to hear. He reaches out to them. He, whenever there is an issue, he goes out himself. He doesn't really depend on his aides. Now, um, the, with particular reference to Aono, which is the town on the highway between um, Meduguri and Damaturu. And I want you to know, and I want the listener to understand, that is pro the only route in Borno state that allows linkage between Bor Borno and other states in the country. Every other route is security compromised. So the significance, the strategic significance of that route is huge. Whenever such attacks occur, it means Borno is really cut off by road. The only other way you can access Borno is to fly in. Now, how many people have the resources to fly in? So understandably, the governor is worried about that route. And when things like that happen, he goes out. Now, that, that is one. Two, the governor has attempted to introduce several state level initiatives to support what the federal government is doing. He's provided equipment for the security agencies. He's armed and to an extent provided equipment and some welfare packages for the, um, the civilian joint tax force component that is supporting the, the infrastructure of security in the state. He's also attempted to garner the confidence of um, the residents in order to support the federal government initiatives. Now, someone like this, with all of these things that I mentioned, there are several other state level initiatives that as a governor he has put forward. When someone like this speaks, you know he's doing it in good faith mm. and he needs to be listened. 
all of his statements are aimed at improving the situation, the circumstances in his state. And I think um, what was mentioned yesterday, especially at the meeting between the um, North Northern Gov the Governors Forum and the president is very instructive. How do we enhance better coordination between the federal level and the state level initiatives? At the end of the day, what both of these levels are doing is for the protection of the ordinary Nigerian. In this instance, the protection of the res resident of Borno, Borno State. Mm -hmm. As at today, people are still dying. Um, the terrorism is still ongoing. So I think um, what, what, what the governor has mentioned, his observations are very valid. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to see an improvement, an enhancement of security in Borno State, um, he needs to be listened to more. Right. He knows what his, the residents of Borno are feeling. He knows what is required. Now, having said this, there is an aspect of our counterinsurgency uh, strategy. Let's remember that we do have a counterinsurgency, um, counterterrorism strategy that is resident in the Office of the National Security Advisor. That component is called countering violent extremism. Now, I have recommended that the state governors need to embrace that component. It speaks about how to tackle terrorism, you know, not, not, not through the use of force. So addressing the root causes of terrorism through um, socioeconomic uh, advancements, issues around tackling poverty, issues around the ideology that is being used to re recruit. I think there is a need for the federal government to take that framework that is domiciled and gathering dust, uh, literally, in the office of the National Security Advisor, take it down to the states, uh, um, ensure the states get buy-in into that strategy, and then they implement it. So that right. you and I, as ordinary Nigerians, understand what that strategy is and support it with the provision of intelligence. All right. Uh, security expert Kabir Adamu, thank you for the new perspective you brought into the conversation and do keep safe out there. Thank you.